such as the ratification and domestication of CEDAW, the enactment of the Women's Act, and, the incre and increased women's representation in key decision-making pos positions. Amin Jai Juf, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Office of the Vice President, said the government has taken a number of measures to mainstream gender at all levels. The advancement of Gambian women and girls 1999 to 2009 was also formulated, which provided a legit, uh, legitimate point of reference for addressing gender inequalities and women empowerment at all levels of society. The Bureau also conducted a review of the national policy for the advancement of women, of Gambian women, in 2006, and this necess necessitated a policy shift from a rights-based approach. Madam Juf went on to say that the national policy for the advancement of Gambian women had its limitations in terms of current national socioeconomic decision and priorities in order to meet the targets of the Millennium Development Goals. Omar Kante, program manager SILIP, said the policy creates strategic programs for various stakeholders to facilitate effective and efficient implementation of commitments that will make a difference in the lives of women and girls. The workshop also availed participants the opportunity to raise issues of concern to the authorities. For JRTS News, Edna Musu. Over now to a media release from the APRC Bureau. All those selected last year to perform the Hajj through the Presidential Hajj Package are hereby asked to immediately liaise with the APRC Bureau for information regarding their Hajj arrangements for this year. The release calls on all concerned beneficiaries to submit to the Gambia International Airline later Saturday, 15 September 2012, a Gambian passport, two passport size photographs with a white background, as well as a vaccination card showing proof of intended pilgrims' vaccination. Ladies are urged to be covered with a veil when taking their passport size photographs. The intending pilgrims, according to the release, are expected to respond immediately to fulfill all processes and requirements including medical examination, vaccinations and visa, as they are likely to be on the first flight for this year. A detailed version of that announcement from the APRC Bureau will be aired in the local languages after this newscast. You can monitor GRTS live on our website at www.grts.gm. That takes us to our first break. We'll be right back. The internet service at the lowest price ever. 3G AfriCell brings you the most affordable 3G internet bundles ever. 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 Get your AfriCell Extreme 3G internet service for as low as $15 only. AfriCell 3G bundles starting from 50 megabytes up to 12 gigabytes. 12 gigabytes bundle for a tariff as low as 5 budgets. Megabytes. And all bundles are valid for 30 days. AfriCell Extreme 3G service for as low as $15. To subscribe, please dial 120 and choose from the available 3G bundles. For more info, call 113. AfriCell Extreme 3G service. For as low as 5 bundles per megabyte, stay connected to AfriCell's 3G network. AfriCell. When we say Extreme 3G, it is truly extreme. Welcome back. Days after he was elected into office, Somalia's new president, Hassan Seh Mahmoud, has survived a suicide bomb attack on the Mogadishu Hotel where he was holding a press conference with Kenya's foreign minister. And the National Press Council of the Ivory Coast has ordered the suspension of 16 newspapers that sympathized with former President Lauren Bagbo. We have details of this and other stories in this roundup of African news. Somalia's new president survived an assassination attempt Wednesday, just two days after he was elected. President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed escaped unhurt after two blasts went off outside the Mogadishu Hotel, where he was meeting Kenya's foreign minister. Three soldiers were killed in the attack. Islamist rebels claimed the blast. The three suicide bombers were killed by police. Gabon's president, Ali Bongo, convened both houses of parliament Wednesday to announce his rejection of a national conference called for by the opposition. Bongo's move came after an aggressive campaign by the opposition that wants the president to step down. Bongo said the conference was aimed at perpetrating a constitutional coup. 
I'm not afraid of dialogue, but I will not sit down and talk to people who do not respect their country's institutions or the leaders who represent them and the laws of the Republic. Bongo also called for a new law that would oblige political parties to include young people and women on their lists. Libya's National Assembly elected 61-year-old Mustafa Abu Shagur as the country's prime minister. Shagur, who is considered close to Islamist groups, beat the liberal candidate Mahmoud Jibril by just two votes. Shagur faces the daunting task of restoring security in the troubled country. Cote d'Ivoire's National Press Council ordered the suspension of six newspapers that support former President Laurent Gbagbo. The CNP accuses the papers of publishing photos of Gbagbo and his aides, now in jail, with captions detailing ministerial posts they were given during last year's post-election crisis. Pro-Gbagbo papers are frequently suspended by the CNP, mainly on account of their refusal to acknowledge Ouattara's victory at the polls in 2010. The United States is in a state of shock following the death of its ambassador and other staffers of the American embassy in Libya. The Benghazi attack, which occurred two months before the presidential election in the U.S., has brought to the American political stage foreign policy issues. And as we hear in this report, Mr. Obama is sending Marines to Libya to protect his country's diplomatic compound and help arrest the perpetrators are deeply shaken by the death of four of their diplomats in the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. According to the U.S. administration, it was an attack planned for the aftermath of September 11 commemorations. Most probably a premeditated act by al-Qaeda, the U.S. said, sparing Libya from any blame in the wake of the Muslim outrage over a film poking fun at Islam. Since our founding, the United States has been a nation that respects all faiths, we reject all efforts to denigrate the religious beliefs of others. But there is absolutely no justification to this type of senseless violence. None. The world must stand together to unequivocally reject these brutal acts. I think the, stories from the U.S. is in a state of shock over the death of its ambassador, known for his engagement in the Arab Spring. How can this happen in a city which we saved from bombardments, Hillary Clinton wondered on Wednesday? Two months ahead of crucial presidential elections, the attack brought foreign policy issues to the forefront of the political stage. The attacks in Libya and Egypt underscore that the world remains a dangerous place and that American leadership is still sorely needed. In the face of this violence, America cannot shrink from the responsibility to lead. The Benghazi attack is a reminder to Americans that the current democratic transition in the Arab world is still very fragile and Islamists continue setting traps. President Obama is sending Marines to Libya to protect the U.S. Embassy and help arrest the perpetrators of the attack. Now take our second week, stay tuned. It is a revolution of great young minds and a competition where everyone is a winner. It is a display of academic potentials, talent, and beauty. Founded and supported by His Excellency the President, Chef Professor Dr. Al-Haji Yahya E.J.J. Jami, the finals of the 2012 Miss 22nd July Scholarship Pageant will take place on Saturday, September 15, 2012 at the Paradise Suits Hotel starting at 8 p.m. The chief guests of honors are His Excellency the President, Chef Professor Dr. Al-Haji Yahya E.J.J. Jami, and Her Excellency the First Lady, Madam Zainab Yahya E.J.J. Jami. Guest artist is Sekuba Bambino, Mam Tam Sirnjai, and Jali Keba. Proudly sponsored by the Gambia Ports Authority, the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, Gam Petroleum, Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, the Gambia Tourism Board, GRTS, Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation, and AFRISAL. Support the Miss 22nd July Scholarship pageant as the scheme will benefit all and Sunday. Welcome back over now to sports. It has been an emotional day of mass suicide in England, a day that Liverpool fans have been waiting almost a quarter of a century for. On Wednesday, they finally got to hear the truth about what happened on that fateful day when 96 supporters were crushed to death at an FA Cup semi-final. We have details in this report. 
in the heart of Liverpool. The 